I want to tell a story. Uh, it's a parable that I actually just heard from my spiritual director. And she had actually told it to me years before, and I had forgotten it, and she told it again, because it seems to be the lesson that I need to keep learning over and over again, and seems to me really is speaking to this Torah portion. And it's called The Parable of the Trapeze. And it's written by someone named Danan Perry. And the idea that he talks about, and I'll read it to you, is that our lives, we imagine that we spend swinging on a trapeze, holding on for dear life onto our trapeze. Um, <clears throat> and so he writes this parable about the experience of going from one trapeze to the next trapeze. And of course, what you have to do in order to make it to the next one is let go. And we dismiss the in-between time, the interim time, as John O'Donohue talked about. We dismiss that time in between as just getting from point A to point B, as if point A and point B are all that there is in life, is landing. But then we miss all of the richness and the pain and the discomfort and the learning and the growth and the beauty in between that comes from fear, that comes from uncertainty, that comes from faith born of the fear and the uncertainty. So this is the parable of the trapeze as our kind of kavana holding for our dear Israelites, for ourselves in this book and ourselves today. I often, when I'm reading B'Shalach, and we'll see what comes out on Tuesday at Lunch and Learn, it's supposed to be this incredibly joyful moment of Torah, right? We made it. We made it through the waters. We made it out of slavery. We made it over to the desert. But for whatever reason, this year when I'm studying it, I'm feeling all of the fear and the pain. Our bat mitzvah last week, Tina can vouch, made this unbelievable drawing of this Torah portion. She was a mincha. And her picture that represented the Israelites was this face covered in their hands, just holding so much fear in their uncertainty that opened up into light and sunshine coming through the clouds, representing the faith that they had to have to be able to step into the water. So here's the parable of the trapeze. Sometimes I feel that my life is a series of trapeze swings. I'm either hanging on to a trapeze bar swinging alone, or for a few moments in my life, I'm hurtling across space in between trapeze bars. Most of the time, I spend my life hanging on for dear life to my trapeze bar of the moment. It carries me along at a certain steady rate of swing, and I have the feeling that I'm in control of my life. I know most of the right questions and even some of the answers. But every once in a while, as I'm merrily, or even not so merrily, swinging along, I look out ahead of me into the distance, and what do I see? I see another trapeze bar swinging toward me. It's empty, and I know, in that place in me that knows, that this new trapeze bar has my name on it. It is my next step, my growth, my aliveness coming to get me. In my heart of hearts, I know that for me to grow, I must release my grip on this present well-known bar and move to the new one. Each time it happens to me, I hope, no, I pray, that I won't have to let go of my old bar completely before I grab the new one, right? But you can't actually make it to the new one without letting go. But in my knowing place, I know that I must totally release my grasp on my old bar, and for some moment in time, I must hurtle across space before I can grab onto the new bar. Each time, I am filled with terror. It doesn't matter that in all my previous hurdles across the void of unknowing, I have always made it. I am each time afraid that I will miss, that I will be crushed on unseen rocks in the bottomless chasm between bars. I do it anyway. Perhaps this is the essence of what the mystics call the faith experience. No guarantees, no net, no insurance policy, but you do it anyway because somehow to keep hanging on to that old bar is no longer on the list of alternatives. 
So for an eternity that can last a microsecond or a thousand lifetimes, I soar across the dark void of the past is gone and the future is not yet here. That moment of suffering that Glennon Doyle talks about. It's called transition. I have come to believe that this transition is the only place that real change occurs. I mean real change, not pseudo change that only lasts until the next time my old buttons get pushed. I have noticed that in our culture, this transition zone is looked upon as a no thing, a no place between places. Sure, the old trapeze bar was real, and that new one coming toward me, I hope that's real too, but the void in between? Is that just a scary, confusing, disorienting nowhere that must be gotten through as fast and as unconsciously as possible? No, what a wasted opportunity that would be. I have a sneaking suspicion that the transition zone is the only real thing and the bars are illusions we dream up to avoid the void where the real change, the real growth occurs for us. Whether or not my hunch is true, it remains that the transition zones in our lives are incredibly rich places. They should be honored, even savored. Yes, with all the pain and fear and feelings of being out of control that can, but not necessarily accompany transitions, they are still the most alive, most growth-filled, passionate, expansive moments of our lives. We cannot discover new oceans, we should say to the Israelites, unless we have courage to lose sight of the shore. Hurtling through the void, we just may learn how to fly.